Hi everybody, um, it's Sunday again, so here I am. Oops, a bit wonky. Um, <laughs> what's new there? Um, today I'm going to be making for you um, a card that I did recently for Crafters Companion for the launch of the new um, edgeable dice that they did, um, which launched on HSN and then they launched in the UK as well. Hi everybody. Um, and Sunday I did switch the sound off on that. Um, because I couldn't get message the um, comments on um, my switcher last week. Oh, it looks like it might be working. I've just seen Susan say hello. Hi, Susan. Um, so I thought I'd bring in my hubby lent me his iPhone. So uh, I've got comments coming up on there. Um, but I left the sound on. Sorry. Um, oh, and Becca's here as well. Hi, Becca. Um, right yes now how's everybody's week been um not a lot happening in my world not a lot happening in anybody's world it's quite a small world we live in at the moment um with your own four walls your house um not going out yay um catching up a lot on netflix which is great so that's good um i'm on four weeks furlough now which you'd think would mean a lot of crafting time but i actually haven't made that much this week um which is very bad of me naughty rachel i will try harder um yes so um my news from this week um i had a leak under the kitchen sink which if anybody has known me for a while, you'll know I'm absolutely gutted about that because I love my kitchen. Um, we had it redone because we had a leak under the kitchen sink um, about three years ago now. And I've got an absolutely beautiful kitchen. I love my lovely solid um, work surface, my quartz work surface, my big range cooker. Um, and I'm absolutely gutted that I had a leak under the sink, but luckily it was only a loose pipe and I've spotted it fairly quickly. So, oh, Jennifer, hi. Um, glad you could join us. Uh, it's only 8.30 in Texas. So um, thank you so much for getting up and, and joining in. Um, yeah, so luckily, like I said, it was only a loose pipe. So I've tightened up the pipe um, and, and, you know, mopped up all the water and, and, and hopefully we're, we're good. Um, I'm just going to have to keep a closer eye on it because I don't want a ruined kitchen again. That would be awful. Um, the upshot of the ruined kitchen or the, the um, leak under the sink was I pulled everything out from under the sink and I wanted to get some more um, baking parchment because I run out of baking parchment. So I've had to stop baking, which is a tragedy because I like my cake. Um, so I wanted to get some more baking parchment. I've ordered some online now. And having cleared everything out from under the sink, I found a brand new roll of baking parchment that hadn't been ruined by the water. So uh, I can actually do some baking soon, so that'll be good. Um, oh, I've got 23 people watching. So thank you everybody who watched last week. I do have to say a special thank you to everybody who watched last week because um, it looks like I managed to inspire a few people to actually have a go at the Double Dutch card. And um, you've all been making them and sharing them online which I think is absolutely marvellous and I'd love it if you did the same again this week because um, that was really fun. Right um, I'll show you a picture of the card we're going to make and then I'll put you on the overhead and I might even put my little ugly mug up in the corner because I found out how to do that this week so that's cool. Right bear with us a second. Right that's the card we're going to make this week um, or a version of it not going to be exactly the same because I've coloured my bits and pieces in differently but I thought I'd show you how to make it and, and have a bit of a fun and a good old chin wag with everybody because that's kind of what I like to do on a Sunday right so I'll switch you now to um, my desktop all right so that's that's the desktop and if I do this one I think so it'll be that one and that one there you go <laughs> Yeah, you can watch me up in the corner. The number of times on the lives that I've been doing over the last few weeks um, where I've had you on the overhead and I've been talking to you and looking at the camera like you can actually see what I'm doing. So now you get to see both. So that's really cool. Um, right. So we'll make a start on this card. Um, I say make a start. I've actually already made a start on this card um, and I've already coloured in quite a few elements so that you can... See, because the last thing I wanted this to be was just a colouring session. Um, I know Leanne's going to be doing one of those later with you anyway. That's if she's got um, her internet working again. Um, so, but I just wanted to, you know, I'll colour in one while I'm, I'm, I'm there. 
All right. Um, um, hi, Martina. Um, good to see you with us. Um, I'm just going to have a swig of coffee because I've been talking too much again already. Right. So the card is basically a Z fold card. So what we need to do, in fact, I'll put the card up in the top corner. Um, there we go. So you can see the card. All right. Um, so it's basically a Z fold card. So I'm going to bring in my cardstock. So we're starting with A4 cardstock because I don't want to um, get too ahead of myself um, with this. All right. Um, so we need to cut it so that we can make it effectively a six by six card. All right. So I'm bringing my big guillotine. All right. And we want to cut the card to um, five and five and seven eighths something like that or is it five and three quarters all right so that's five and three quarters by a four length and then we are going to score it using our lovely ultimate pro um, on the half fold a four line now we're going to want this inside, so I'm going to flip that over. So we want the half fold A4 line. And the, let me see, so that's going to go there, right? Half fold, and then this one's going to fold back. So we want to fold that on the gate fold A4 line. All right, so we now have our Z fold card base, okay? Um, I'll just pop that down next to me because I'm gonna need it again in a minute. Now, normally I would use the bit on the bottom to um, create our um, little bit, but because we're gonna be using the bubbles, well, Cascading circles, it's called. Um, and if I put that on there, you'll see it actually overlaps the edges. So that's not really a very good, good thing to do. We need something a bit wider than that. All right. And I'm going to be inking it as well. So um, I want to, to have it a bit wider. So what I tend to do is I'll just have a look and see how wide I want it to be. So I need it to be probably to there which is let's put it on the mat three say about three and a half inches i think i'm going to need to make that wide okay so if we cut that to three and a half inches wide hi mum <laughs> mum's made it along to my life um right so this we're going to score in exactly the same way as we just did that other one. All right, so we want to fold it on the half fold and on the gate fold. The reason I flip it over is because I'm going to be folding it in different ways. So that first one I'm folding back on itself and then that one is the other way. All right, so that now will fit onto our card like that. All right, so we have the um, box there. Okay. So now that we've got that, um, we want to cut. We'll do our cutting first of all. So we'll get our um, bubbles ready. Okay. Um, so what I do is, tend to do, is make put it so that um, the first cut goes up to the um, center fold all right and just tape that in place so that we don't get it moving about now i don't need my metal shim because it's um although it's quite an int intricate die um it's quite an open intricate so it cuts quite nicely and it goes through my junior because i'm only cutting a strip so that makes life easier as well. All right, 
these. So we've just cut our first bit. Let's not stick it down to the uh, acetate sheet. That's not good. And this is where we end up with lots of little bits of circles all over the place and I've lost a pokey tool. Every week I lose something along with more marbles. Oh, hi, Jan. Jan's made it along all the way from Spain. But then with Jennifer in Texas as well, we're going well and truly international, aren't we? So, uh, I have to say there were some lovely cards made last week um, as a result of my live. I really did enjoy seeing everybody's makes. That was fabulous. So thank you so much for that. Ooh, one bit left. All right, and we'll just cut that again. Lining that first one up in the middle. Okay, so we will have cut it twice. Tidy up while that goes through. Um, I've got my pens out ready so that I can just finish off that last mermaid. And I have got a bit of a tip for you on mermaids in a minute. Um, just something I discovered while I was working with them. So, having our first pizza tonight since lockdown. Oh, nice. Okay, right, so that bit in the middle just comes out. I will tidy it up, don't worry because um, it's a little bit fluffy. Okay, and poke out all of the little bits. So did anybody get the um, the uh, edgeable dies whilst they were on, either in the States or on Create and Craft? Would be nice to be nice to know. In fact, it'd be lovely. At least this way you'll have at least one idea for using them. And you don't have to use it as mermaids. There's all sorts of things you could do with uh, with this particular dye. Um, you know, they can be ba um, bubbles in your bath or bubbles in your wine or champagne, I should say. If you've got bubbly wine, it's gone off. <laughs> and if you're leaving it that long, what's wrong with you? Right. Okay, so that's that done. And we now have our bubbles for the front. And like I said, we'll just give that little tufty bit that's there a little nick. And that will get rid of the little fluff. All right, so that's that's the front. Now, I put that away and that was very stupid of me because I'm going to need that. Bear with. Because, having done that, what we want to do... <laughs> Jan, you've spent enough. I know. I, I Yes. Tell them all about Sarah's, Sarah's comment. It was huge. Um, <laughs> Susan is, is asking me to tell you all about... Um, I posted my um, mermaid make the picture that you can see up in the, the, the top right corner. Um, I, I posted that make onto Instagram and Sarah actually um, made a comment on it and, and said that my makes for this launch were, were gorgeous, which um, is just huge for me. That's awesome. And I was very, very chuffed to have heard that. Joan you succumbed to them. Yes, I can understand it. Right, what I've done is I've put the die back in place over the top of where it's cut. So you just wiggle it about until it finds its way back in into place. All right, and you hold it down and we're just going to um, ink over the bottom. All right, so we're going to create a nice little C effect. Um... One of my first top tips is when you're using, um, this is the uh, parakeet 
um, water reactive, all right, which is one of my favourite colours. Um, I just love it. All right, if you do go a bit too heavy handed and you get a little mark, whatever you do, don't get more ink and press harder. All right, what you want to do is keep going over it, but press less. All right, and you just keep gently going over it. Do not add more ink. All right, and as you do that, it will blend out. It will start to move around because the ink stays wet and open for longer. You will find that you will be able to um, blend out. But if you keep adding more ink and you go in really heavily, it won't blend out at all. Right, can you see there I've got a little mark and I'm just going to keep blending and I'm not grabbing more ink off the ink pad I'm just grabbing it off the mat where I put it I'm not pressing heavily and it's yes it's there a little bit but it's not nearly as bad as it could have been all right and then when you lift that off it's only gone around the bottom so it's left you a nice little white halo around those bubbles which is Fabulous. All right. So we'll just give our mat a wipe so that we don't end up with blue on everything else. And we'll... Oh, hi, Caroline. You've made it along. Nice to see you, um, as it were. Can't really see you, but, you know. Um, and we'll just clean off the bottom of our dye as well because you can end up ruining that as well. Um, or ruining the next card that you're planning on making by getting ink all over it all right so it's always worth making sure you clean up as you go along with that sort of thing and i'll put this away before i lose it because otherwise i will lose it mind you some people say i lost it years ago um right so that's that one away all right now what we're going to do is another nice little tip which is a bit of faux bleaching so i just need to find a bit of water um finding anything on this desk is a miracle all right, and um, I like to do this with a brush. So I'm just going to grab one of my brushes. Um, I'm using my brothers as delivery as delivery men. Oh, nice. All right, so we're just going to flick little bits of water onto this. All right, and. Once we've got enough on, there we go. I think that should be plenty. Let's pop that to the side, can tidy that up later. You should see the mess in my craft room after I've been doing one of these lives, it's great. Right, I'm just getting a bit of tissue. All right, and wrecking the joint. There we go. Luckily, you weren't looking at me then. <laughs> oh, making a mess. Right, so now that's given that even longer to bleach out, which is actually a good thing. So now if I lift this up to the camera, can you see we've got our nice little bubbly C effect along the bottom. Isn't that fabulous? Right, so we've got our front piece ready to go onto our card we need to decorate up our card okay and a couple of bits that I hadn't dabbed off right so we'll pop these two bits out of the or pop that bit out of the way now when I made it originally um, uh, as you can see on the little thing at the top I used a dark blue um, card for my matting but I was having a look around this morning and I found my Winter Wonderland um, A4 Luxury Glitter card. And I thought, doesn't that look fab? And I thought, doesn't the blue glittery look very sea-like? And the camera is picking that up really nicely. So I thought I'd use this instead. Um, and I'll show you about gutting card because um, what's more gutting than using up your card stock really quickly? Um, so I try, I'm such a cheapskate, I really do try and make the best of 
best of it. Right, I'm going to cut it down to the right width, first of all, because then it will be the same all the way along. All right. Um, hi to all those 41 people who are watching me. Um, I don't know who all of you are, but you are most welcome. And it's lovely to see you here. And I hope you come back again next week if I don't waffle too much. All right, so I'm just going to put a snip in that so that I know where to trim it. And then wreck my whole craft room getting my trim up. Um, there's always a lot of clattering in my craft room because I'm always wrecking the place. All right, so we have that. I'm not actually going to be able to move from my desk when I've finished here because everything's just sort of like on the floor around me um, so now we want a piece that will sit here all right I can use my small trimmer for this I'm um, way new in um, NI where's NI from a moy NI wow it's probably a long way away anyway. Lovely to have you with us, Maggie. Thank you. Okay, now, let's make sure that that's the right way round. As I've said to you before, even on square cards, sometimes it's not quite square, so I always try and mark my top and bottom so that I don't go losing it. Like I said, I've already lost it, but, you know... Okay, so that's going to be that way round, isn't it? Yes. Oh, Northern Ireland, not that far. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always was particularly directionally unstable. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, although not as un directionally unstable as a colleague of mine at work who thought that um, Brazil was um, near Spain. So uh, I'm not mentioning names because that wouldn't be fair, but it was very funny. Um, but then I did also have another colleague who um, didn't know that there used to be a speaking clock um, and thought it was absolutely hilarious that you could phone someone up to, to find out the time. Um, so used to so used to mobile phones and that tell you everything and, and run your life for you. Um, and then there was another colleague. And yes, this one was blonde, who, um, when told that that particular day was the longest day, she pointed out that she thought that they were all 24 hours um, and how could it be longer than the rest of the days. Um, it's hilarious. But these people really do exist. Um, right. So, gutting card. Um, I've got a paper trimmer here. Yes, I have lots of paper cutters. No, I'm not counting up how many I've got because I have way too many. All right, but what I tend to do with this one um, is either at the one centimetre or trim it at the... Oh, there we go. Sorry, you weren't quite in shot there. Um, Ta-da! There. Right, um either at the one or the one and a half centimetre, depending on how wide a border I'm going to be leaving. Um, I'll do it at the one and a half centimetre because uh, I just want to make sure that it is all good. All right, and then we just go all the way around, um, but not going all the way up to the top so that you're leaving about one and a half centimetres, funnily enough. Hi, Leslie. Lovely to have you join us. Um, from Grimsby, wow. And what's it like in Grimsby today? In Plymouth, it is still lovely and sunny, but they keep telling us it's going to be miserable soon. So it uh, doesn't really matter. I'm at my craft desk. I'm not going to get wet. Not unless I spill my water pot. All right. So what I've done is basically save that piece of card to be able to be used on something else. All right. Um, yes, I could do it on the other two pieces, but meh. They're a bit smaller. I'm, I'm less likely to, to use those as spare anywhere else. But what I could do 
is we're going to put a sentiment on like the one um, that I did before. Um, and the sentiment comes from the Nautical Collection, uh, the Seize the Day stamp set. Um, and we used Wishing You Oceans of Happiness on the last one. Um, and we could put either, I don't know, you anchor me or waving hello. What do you reckon? Anybody, any thoughts? Don't know. It's cold and wet up in Grimsby today. Oh, harumph. Well, you're inside. It's fine. And you're among friends, so that's even better. I'm just going to have a swig of coffee. Right. Okay, so nobody's got any preference as to which one we use. That's all right. Um, I think I'll go with waving. Ah, there you go, Susan. Thank you. Great mind to think alike. I was thinking waving hello. Right. Um, and it's light rain in Newmarket, Suffolk. Oh, dear. Like I said, you're inside. You're among friends. It's fine. Don't need to worry. Right, so what we want to do is we're going to stamp this one, waving hello. Um, and I'm doing this slightly out of order because I want to um, mat and layer and I'm going to use one of those pieces of cardstock there. It's always a good idea where you can to have a think about um, your card and as you go along, I'll put you on the overhead. Solo. There we go. That's me again. It's always a good idea to have a think when you're making a card, you know, what embellishments you're likely to want to put on it and what sentiment you're probably going to put on it. Because if you can think about those things in advance, um, you can then go, oh, I can I can cut that out of, of my um, matting card. Um, and that way you can save yourself an awful lot. The number of cards I've made where afterwards I've gone, oh, I could have saved so much time if I'd just done that. Or I could have saved so much card if I'd cut that bit out of there. And, you know, by which time I've glued it down, there's not a bad chance in hell I'm going to be able to do that. So, uh, um, yeah, so always have a think about your card um, and, and what you're likely to want, because that way you might be able to be slightly more econo economical with stuff um, and, and get away with a bit more. All right. I'm just going to put you back on the over overhead. There we go. All right. So um, I need my anti-static, which I've also lost somewhere in here. Oh, there we go. It's hiding behind my stick away. All right, so I'm just going to use my anti-static bag on there. I love the way you cut the square out. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a skill. Some of us have it. Um, right, and I'm going to use clear embossing powder. So the stamp I'm going to or the ink I'm going to use for this is the Harmony Opaque Lagoon. And that's another one of my favourite colours. In fact, that collection of colours is my favourite, um, which is Oasis, Parakeet and Lagoon. And they are just beautiful. Now, um, oh, let's get my little blue sheet. I don't have one of Crafter's Companions stamping mats yet, so uh, I have to wing it with my own. So this is just a piece of funky foam that I found lurking in a corner um, that works beautifully for this. Lots of light tapping um, with your ink, just to make sure you've got a really, really good coverage. All right. Let's move it off the edge of the mat. Press it down. And I like to hold it there for a minute. Um, not pressing it down anymore. I'm just holding it there so that the ink can grab into the um, cardstock. Um, just gives you a much clearer impression. All right, and then I'm just gonna go over the top with some clear embossing powder. All right, and then let's pop that out the way. And I even have two heat guns, how sad am I? That 
that is such a fun thing to do. Oh, hi, Debbie. Nice to see you. It's OK. You can go back and watch it later. It's not a problem. Um, we're only halfway through. It's all right. I think halfway through. Better be halfway through because uh, I need to be off before the end starts. Right, let's give me a stamper clean. You know me. I like to keep my stamps all nice and clean as I go along. All right. Okay, so let's pop this one away because otherwise I'll lose it. Okay, so we can cut that one out and then we can cut a mat for it. So I was going to use some of these. And what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, Bring this in and have a look and see. No, it does fit, but only just. Might be better to go for a slightly bigger one. Yeah, I think. I tell you what, let's um pop. There we go. So you can see the card again. All right, so we'll just cut it out with that one. And then I want the next one up so that I can do my matte and layer. I love these layering dies. They are awesome. Leanne must have had her Wi-Fi issues. I can't believe how fast this week has gone. I hope she's had her Wi-Fi issues sorted um, at the moment. I don't know how fast they're working at fixing things like that. Um, I appreciate that Wi-Fi has actually become quite a high priority now, hasn't it, really, for people? So, uh, yeah, you'd hope that she's had it sorted. Um, right, so what I'm going to do is just cut that out. Um, I'm not going to use my new folder. I've got some new folders. Look, this is my old one and it's very bendy. <laughs> it's got a lovely little S bend in it, um, but I'm not going to use one of my new ones, which are nice and flat um, because this one still works. Um, and like I said, I'm a cheapskate, so uh, I'm going to use the old one. All right, so I'm just going to tape it down so that it doesn't move as it goes through. And I'm going to bung it through my Gemini Mini. At least that way I'm not being quite so noisy. But I am wobbling the table, sorry. Ooh. I'm fine, Debbie. How are you? Um, sorry, I forgot to answer that bit of your question. Um, right, so that's my sentiment. And now I want to do the map for it. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in this so fingers crossed um yep that fit does fit in in the uh, mini cool all right tape it down again just so it doesn't wiggle about too much that's the last thing we want is it ruining that map do your dies fall off your magnetic folder and get lost um not really no i'm quite careful about making sure that they do ping sometimes and I have to put them back on. Um, but no, I don't use any. Um, well, I lose most things, but not dies. So there we go. We now have that matted and layered and it's all come out of our background bit. So we're not wasting anything, which is always good, I find. Uh, let's put these away before I lose them as well. What is it? Sorry, bending down onto the floor. Oh, hi, Terry. And you're from Maryland. Wow. What time is it in Maryland? Is it really early? Waiting for my mini to arrive. I've bought it because when I come back over, I have to self-isolate. So I'll be bringing a case full of crafting things with me going to go crazy on my own for that length of time but I know it's important to stay safe absolutely Jan um blimey you'll be doing an awful lot of cutting out um I'll try and keep you company on a Sunday afternoon for a bit okay so I'm going to stick these two bits together while I think of it because it will give the glue a chance to dry while I'm doing everything else it's 10 o'clock in the morning wow if you had your breakfast or have you only just got up it's Sunday. If it was me, I, you're, you know, lucky. 
I actually got up early this morning for a Sunday. So, and as everybody knows, I have run out of my um, all-purpose glue. I mention it every week. I'm gutted that I have run out of my all-purpose glue, but my tacky glue is uh, awesome stuff. Make sure you've got plenty of this, Jan. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your cards together. You've got your coffee, Terry. Good. I've got a cup of coffee here. It's gone cold, but I don't mind cold coffee, actually. Where did you get the folder from, please? And what's the biggest die it holds? Um, I got it direct from Crafter's Companion, um, the folder, and it holds A4 dies because it's an A4 sheet. So it will hold an A4 die in it. Um, so, yeah. No, I haven't found any Colal yet. I haven't actually been looking that hard. I'm waiting for it to come back in stock at Crafter's Companion because I'm trying to support um, Crafter's Companion. Um, being on the design team is one thing, but I actually think they're an awesome company and they deserve my support as well. So um, I'm, I'm trying to stick with them. So I will wait until it comes back into stock if, you know. Anyway, so that's my sentiment done. Now we need to um, sort out the... Uh, card base now there we go that's the right way around for that so um, on the original um, we I used an embossing folder so what I want to do is I've got some more Centura Pearl Hint of Silver which is the same I used as I used for the base card all right and I'm just going to um, do mats again for my lovely glitter that I've got here. All right. Shouldn't take too long. People keep sending me friend requests. I can't do anything at the minute. A very unusual friend request this morning. Somebody sent me a friend request and I accepted it because I'm nice like that. And um, then she sent me a, a message on Messenger saying, have you got any tissues? So I sent a, a, a question mark back and she said, you know, have you got any tissues? You look like you've got a cold. And I went, what? And she um, then sent me another message basically saying that um, I looked bunged up, um, which I thought was incredibly bizarre. So uh, I just sent a message back saying, I don't actually think you're in, you uh, want to be friends, so I'm going to delete you. Um, I don't know whether anybody else has had anything like that, but I thought that was really strange. So, hey you go. She might have had genuine concerns for my health. I don't know, but I just thought it was a bit weird. So, okay, so little trimmer, little trimmer. There we go. Sorry, making way too much noise there. Right, so that's our main piece. And I believe that's the right way round for it. So I'll just mark a T at the top of it on the back. Yes, it was very random. Um, but people are odd, is all I'll say to that. Um, each to his own, I suppose. I mean, maybe my nose does look a bit big. And a bit bunged up but it's my nose and it's the same one I've had for 49 years um, so I'm stuck with it pretty much <laughs> yes Debbie there are some very strange people in this world it gave me a bit of a chuckle for five minutes um, I did kind of like think I'm not going to engage her any more than that um, right now I'm confused that is not the piece that I wanted, is it? Uh, yes, it is the piece that I wanted, so I... One of the many things I'm losing is the plot. do love how we're getting a lot of um, lives. 49, we have to do something for your big 5-0. Um, you're going to have a job, Susan, because it's in September and I don't think we're going to be out of lockdown properly by then. Um, 
We can have a socially isolated party. How's that? We'll, we'll sort something out. I'll sit here on my own with a little hat on and <laughs> one of those little things that, um, you know, the, the um, things that blows out. I can't even remember what they're called. Right. So um, the folder I'm going to use, this is a lovely one um, from Sarah's birthday party. Sarah's signature birthday party. It's called Scattered Dots and it's a really beautifully versatile um, embossing folder. So I'm going to use that one for this. Um, get my folders together. Um, I'm going to put my metal shim in as well because um, I know that it's um, mine's a bit loose on embossing dies, so I thought I'd give it an extra shim that nicely right okay so we have that it's not embossed along that edge quite so nicely but what I'll do with the next one is put it in the middle so it doesn't actually matter quite so much Yes, definitely chocolate cake. Chocolate cake would be good, Mum. I might make some um, flapjacks and millionaire shortbread. I love millionaire shortbread. It's my favourite. And I've got a really good um, recipe, which I found that is kind of fail safe on the um, caramel layer. It's the um, Mary Berry Ultimate Cake Book, and it's brilliant. <laughs> You've got that embossing folder, Jan, yes. I think we all have it working somewhere. Um, if you're a fan of Sarah's signature collections, you're bound to have it somewhere. Okay, so we've now embossed all of our layers. Hope that doesn't come crashing down. Right, now, um, they're a bit dull and uninteresting just like that. So what we're going to do with the same um, parakeet again, I'm just going to go over the top and we're going to highlight the bubbles. All right. Now, one thing I would say about this is um, because you're going onto a coated cardstock, Century of Pearl, what you want to do um, shouldn't really get your fingers on it um, because the ink won't dry straight away it can't do because it's going onto a, like a, a coated surface all right so when you've done it when you've done it just give it a little bit of a rub and that should take off the loose ink and just leave what you want there see I've got blue fingers already came across a recipe for oreo brownies <gasps> Ooh. Mum, when I can come over, <laughs> can I have Oreo brownies, please? Nice. That sounds awesome. Try not to get finger marks all over everything. All right, there we go. And you can put as much or as little on as you like, and it doesn't have to be even. It's the C. Hi, Rach. Sorry, just got here. That's OK, Nicole. I know you were decorating. So uh, how did that go? <laughs> You're off to play with your scan and cut in a minute as well, I gather. Mine's sat gathering dust on a shelf. I really must get it out and learn how to use it properly. But, you know, hey ho. Right. OK, so let's just give these a bit of a wipe off so that... Get rid of the excess ink. Okay, put that out of the way. Um, and give me a surface a bit of a clean again. Got the ingredients may drop by in the week. Oh, cool. Thanks, Mum. Socially distanced, of course. So, right. We have those and we have this one. So what we're going to do 
is start putting the card base together. All right, nice and simple. Until you start throwing everything all over the place, but that's fine. Okay. So put all our mats and layers on. Try not to get too much glue near the edge because otherwise it oozes everywhere. All right, nice and even. Tidied up the paint pots for watching whilst you having a cuppa. Uh, scan and cut next. Oh, lovely. Any top tips for uh, the uh, scan and cut? Much appreciated. I used to use mine when we were working on um, design team stuff and there were lots of small bits to cut out um, from CDs. I remember doing, um, oh, who was it? Barclay Christmas. Was it Barclay? No, it wasn't. It was um, Snowman and Snow Dog. And um, we had to do the baubles. Um, from the CD which involved quite a lot of cutting and I was incredibly grateful to have the scan and cut at that point um, because it meant I managed to cut out everything really quickly so uh, it did all the hard work which is what I love about Crafters Companion as well they, they sort stuff out so that it does the hard work and you don't have to I just realised that those two weren't quite the same size. We are terrible, aren't we? We buy these things and they're really expensive bits of kit and then they sit on the shelf gathering dust. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using it just to cut out stamped images. Absolutely not. But at least you're using it. Um, you know, I haven't even used it to cut out a stamped image in at least two years so <laughs> right so we now have our z fold and we have our layers on it um and let's find our front bit because now we can attach this all right so what we want is to put a, if I, I the way i found to make sure that you're gluing the right bits is if you fold it up and you hold it back to front so that you've got the back facing you all right and then you can just glue the little bits you can see all right so that's put glue on those bits and I'm just going to grab my dotty tape runner and put a few bits at the top so that it holds it down a little bit just a little bit especially along the edge where it's um loose okay oops there's my top for it just received my scan and cut wanted it for ages absolutely do you know what it is one of those things you look at it and it's like really scary isn't it um and it's also quite scary because you spend so much money on it and it's like i don't want to break it first cut a scan and cut i got um, I actually had to be sent back because it was broken when I received it, which was a pain. Um, but it was replaced really quickly and um, was such fun to use when I first got it. The novelty of it. Um, that's a great tip, have to remember that. Thank you, Anna, and nice to see you. Um, right, so now we have that all ready to go. So now we need to work on our, um, wow, great aunt's 100 today. Good grief. I hope she gets her um, uh, telegram from the Queen, or is it a card now? I don't know what, what she does now. Um, right, so on to our, um, our mermaids. Now, I wanted to give you a tip, and it's about this little mermaid here, the one with the waggly tail. Um, 
You'll understand why I say that in a minute. Right. The tip is this. That mermaid and all of these um, lovely little pieces have dies that cut them out. But this little mermaid here, if I hook her up to the camera, can you see her tail wiggles about? Now, if you stick her down to a stamp mat or to your stamping platform and you've moved that tail slightly, that ain't going to cut out correctly for love nor money. And it's a real pain. And I know it's a real pain because I've done it and I ended up cutting it out wonky. And then I'd stamped it beautifully, coloured it beautifully, cut it out badly and ended up having to throw it away. And I don't want you to do that. So the thing to do with that one is put her down on your cardstock and just let her flop loose before you then get whatever stamping platform you're going to be using. Um, and then you pick it up like that. And that should mean that when you get the die, the die should sit right over the top of it all right and you can test that out before you even stamp it if you want to um so that you get the the um stamp exactly right and it doesn't um stamp wrong and then you can't cut it out all right and i just wanted to to share that with you because it's something that i found um, and you'll find it with with any stamps that have got like loose little bits and they've got matching dies to go with them the dies, the dies won't match up if it's not stamped correctly. So you need to be a little bit careful with your stamping on that one because of her waggly tail. At least she's not the doggy in the window. Um, right. Good grief, I've been on nearly an hour. And I'm not quite finished. I'm so sorry. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, so um, I've coloured up everything except this last... Um, mermaid and I thought ah thanks Nicole I'm glad somebody appreciates it <laughs> right um, so I'm going to colour up this last mermaid and I thought I'd show you the mermaid because then I could show you the skin tones that I use for a pale skin like me um, so I'm using tri blends and I've got the fair skin blend and tan blend and I'm only going to use the lightest colour on the tan blend as my darkest colour of skin all right and then I use um the pale pink blend, and I use the middle one of that, pale pink two, PP2, um, to do the blush on her cheeks. All right, so we'll do that first. And because she's only little, whoops, start with FS7, because otherwise it's too pale. Um, because she's only little, you can do quite a lot in one hit with her. All right, so we're just going to... Would it be easier if I, can I zoom in? No, it's not gonna let me zoom in. Oh, it's because I've got the um, two pictures, the picture in picture. Maybe if I uh, get rid of that one. Yeah, there we go. Oop, no, that's zoom out, let's zoom in. There we go, I'll just move her about a bit so that you can see. All right, so we'll just do, that's the FS7. Then I'm gonna go in with my darkest, which is the TN1. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of shadow around the top of her hair, maybe a bit the side of the face, under the chin, down between where the hair is, bit of the belly. And I've forgotten to color one of her arms in, that's fine. go now the reason another reason for me not showing you too much of the coloring is i'm not colorist i'm not the best um so there are much better people out there to show you coloring than me um so please go and watch them um yeah <laughs> like i said i'm not a colorist i just these little things, they're fabulous because there's not too much colouring to them. Um, certainly not big areas. All right, so, but that does mean, with especially with things like this, that 
you know, they're fairly easy for someone like me to pick up and colour. And you're not going to go wrong with it. All right, so that's those three done. I'm just going to use burnt orange on these little stars. And I thought I'd do her hair in purple. So I've got the purple blend here. All right, so I'm just going to start with the lightest. Okay, and go over everything. I tend to go quiet, I'm really sorry. Um, I'm trying not to go quiet. I'm trying to waffle more. Good at waffling. I couldn't believe I was reading something the other day and it said, um, you know, it will soon be um, Christmas in June. You know, everybody does the, the Christmas in June crafting and that. And I thought, oh my God, I can't believe we're ha nearly halfway through the year already. How insane is that? I think we'll look back on 2020 and it'll be 2020 the year that never was um, because it is just mental. Right, and then I'm just going to put some really dark in. And I'm just going to go roughly round her wiggles of her hair that's there, down the inside edge. Nothing particularly fancy. Just to give it a bit of a bit of colour. That's your hair at Craft Gansett. Yeah, it was actually. Um, yeah, it's gone very blue at the moment, um, but I can't have it done. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to a more normal colour. What's normal? Uh, I have no idea what normal is at the moment. <laughs> don't at the best of times. Tenuous grass, but really on reality. Um, that's fine. All right, and then just over the top to blend that last bit out. I do love these tri blend pens, they really are quite juicy. And for someone like me, who really is quite a novice colourist, um, they're great because it's already giving you the blend. You don't have to get any more pens out, that's it. And I'm going to use the aqua blue blend um, to give us the mermaid um, tail. All right, so I'm just going to do the first little bit at the top here and colour that up. And the order that the pens have, the, um, pens have been put in, it's great with the way you can um, flip around and it's actually quite easy to know which one you're using at the time. All right, so we go over the area with our lightest cover and then decide where our whoops, shadows are. There we go, just so that you can see that. I'm going to put it down this left hand side. Okay, nice and rough. Then go in with our mid tone to blend that out a bit. So go over the top of the edge of our darkest colour, but not all the way because otherwise you'll just bleach it out and then you won't have any dark. You could, if you wanted to, if you've got the colour blend pencils add in more detail as well with, with those um, would be great. Um, I won't because I'm running really late as it is, um, as it's 3.30 already. Can't believe it's 3.30. Good God. Right. Here we are. Nearly done. As you can see, I did make a mistake with one of my, my stamps. It didn't stamp properly, so I just stamped it again. So, 
There we go, nice wigglies. Creating a nice bit of colour in there. Blend it out. I know I'm not being very careful. Um, I am conscious of the fact that you've been watching me for like an hour now and listening to me ramble on. Um, but it's nice to be able to ramble on to other people. And at least I haven't had any error messages on um, Switcher telling me that my internet connection was bad. There. Right. That was just a bit of blend of pen to try and get rid of um, my mistakes. All right. So now we just need to cut this lot out. All right. So what I'm going to do is bring in me mat. Oops, that's too wide. Hey ho! Right, I might have to do that in a couple of couple of bits. Um, yes, there's a plastic one. There we go. Right. So what I'm going to do is if I just cut around. I tell you what, let's try and get that. Oh no! God, zooming in on my arm—that's really nasty. We don't want to go doing that. There we go. Stand still. Right. So. Just cut that out and this is where we end up using lots of little bits of tape. Um, so, mermaid. And she sits much nicer than, than the other one because she's um, great to watch Rach. I'd be on for hours trying to demo. <laughs> I have to say, you, you do have to sort of like think about um, what you can reasonably get done in the space of time. And I think I was slightly over ambitious this week um, with everything that I wanted to fit in. So uh, I do apologise. Tell you what, let's get that, um, is it that one. Yes, it is that one. Right. OK, so. Take those two down. That's the seahorse. Uh, the star. Uh, bubbles. Where's my bubbles? There they are. And the fish. Oh, and the shell. I'll get the shell in in a minute. Wrong way round. Fish one, fish two. It's a bit like thing one and thing two from uh, Dr. Seuss. Did anybody see the um, poem I posted on my timeline from Pam Ayers? Absolutely brilliant. She's done, done one on the um, lockdown. And I think it's fabulous. But then I love Pam Ayers at the best of times. If you haven't seen it, scroll down my timeline and uh, you will find it. It's brilliant. I don't know how I got from um, Dr. Seuss to Pam Ayers, but anyway. That's what happens when you nattering away to yourself all day um, but then that's why I come and do these lives so that I can at least pretend I'm nattering to everybody else and it's not just me all right so that one's finished with we'll just run this through Never mind, we'll use it anyway, it's fine. That's why I tape them down, only I didn't tape it down well enough. Never mind, hey ho. Right. Let's just 
poke out all of these little bits. Right, now, I don't know whether you noticed, but everything except the shell is already, I put them in all on the stamp mat at the same time. So all I've got to do is just move the whole lot and it's ready to go again. So, star, move that out for the not star shell. Okay, so let's get this one in. You don't have those stamps, Debbie. You should get them, they are awesome. I love them. Um, they're one of the ones that launched with the um, pop up box die. such great fun. I tend to stamp and make more than I need for the card um, because then I can have a bit of a play and see which I like best and move stuff around and things like that so Yes, you were great on the Craft Factor demo, Debbie. Um, well done, Susan, for saying that. Um, yes, 10 minutes. That's they, they really do cut it a bit short there. I mean, I've been on, what, an hour and 10 minutes and I still haven't finished. Right. So, mermaid. Other mermaid. Now let's make sure I take this one down properly this time. So at least she'll be in the right place. Use two bits of tape, I think. I think that was my mistake last time. Should have used two bits. There we go. Right. So, seahorse. Where's my shell? I saw that shell up there. There we go. Seahorse, shell, uh, seaweed, other seaweed. Yeah, I bet you were incredibly nervous. I know I would be. But then I had to swallow my nerves to come and do lives here. I thought, what the hell? If I'm going to be locked down, the least I can do is, if I can't be out talking to my friends, I can talk to them online. So, more tape, more tape. There we go. I prefer to colour and then cut because um, otherwise you're trying to hold little tiny pieces to colour them in. So uh, I stamp, colour and then cut. If it's a big piece, it's not too much of a problem to um, to cut and then stamp. Um, but where it's little tiny pieces like this, I wouldn't. I would always tend to stamp it, colour it. Once I'd done it, though, I wanted to do it again. Yes, a bit like being on a roller coaster, in it? You go, yay, let's do that again. I get that. I do get that. Oh, she's cut out. I forgot about that. And there you go. That just goes to show when you get it in the right place, it's fine. Um, but that tail could have ended up, well, all over the place. Um, but thankfully not. Right. Okay, let's take that down. Let's take that off. Last run through the machine and then we can finish off our card. Got 
haven't finished the card by four o'clock because I've got to go and put the oven on for tea. My family are fed up with roast chicken. They demanded something else tonight. Well, they didn't demand. They said, please, can we have something else? Um, so uh, we're having roast beef for tea tonight with Yorkshire puddings. I love making Yorkshire puddings. I like sitting in front. Of, you know, like um, on uh, Bake Off, I like sitting in front of the oven and watching them rise. I did actually sit and watch them rise once right into the top of the oven because um, they really rose. So, right now. So the next bit you're going to need to know how to do is to make your little um, pieces to go in your little strips to go in here. Um, and there isn't actually any real um, technique to them. So you just want to make them about half an inch deep. So they need to be less deep than, than the um, little piece on the bottom of your card. All right, so I don't know, three quarters of an inch, that'll probably do it, wouldn't it? Okay. So that's your little strip. And they need to be just a bit longer. You want Yorkshire puddings now, yeah. Well, you can have Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings are really easy to make. Um, so, right, I'm just going to get a ruler and measure this. So this little bit here, 7.2 centimetres. That's really helpful, isn't it? Just under seven and a half, 7.2, 7 7.3. 7 Let's call it 7.2. So if we just, oops, just stuck that to the back. There we go. That's the only problem. Right. If we make 7, 7.2, if I do it 9.2, um, and then I can score it at one centimetre either side. And you want to measure it when you've done it because, you know, on a hot day, cold day, it's, um... and I nearly lost a piece there, um, can make a difference to how big it turns out. So I'm just going to score at one centimetre on either side of this, which will be our gluing bits. All right, and these are just like um, you would get with the pop-up box. You know, you get those little um, side tabs. Well, these are those. Got frozen in the freezer. I'm rubbish at making them from scratch. Do you know what? The best recipe I found for making Yorkshire puddings is you start off with eggs. So if you want to do, I don't know, say one egg, right? So you weigh your egg and however much your egg weighs, you then put exactly the same weight of flour, plain flour in, and exactly the same weight of milk and you weigh it, yeah? And it makes a really quite thick batter, pinch of salt, and then just leave it to stand for half an hour. And then you pour it into your um, little mould or, you know, your little um, muffin tray and then stick it in a hot oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And it never fails, never goes wrong. Um, and that's the way I found to do it. So, uh, yeah, if that's any good to anybody. All right. So we just fold in the little one centimetre ends. All right. And we're just going to stick glue those or stick them, I'm just going to use red liner, or not red liner, I'm just going to use my um, tape runner to do this, because we're running out of time, um, and Leanne will be very cross if I run into her time, that she's live, um, and I wouldn't want to, because I like watching Leanne, it's very relaxing, having just spent the afternoon um, running around doing mine, alright, so we just stick these in the bottom, I don't don't know whether you can see it, so just in the bottom, doesn't matter where. Um, so you just have two of these so that you can stick little bits onto. All right, and if you just flatten it out like that and bring it back, I try not to stick it onto the back. Um, 
let me know how you get on Debbie that'd be brilliant um, I used to do them the same way as a pancake batter um, and they were a bit hit and miss um, doing pancakes that way but I found that recipe with the same weight of, of eggs and, and flour and milk works beautifully right so once they're in can you see you've got your two um, bits for attaching stuff onto all right and they let's just make sure that they allow the card to close that top one was a bit tight it wasn't allowing the card to close yeah and that's the good thing with that um, tape runner it does allow you to until you've given it a really really good press down it does allow you to have a little bit of movement now another money saving tip um for your acetate which you're going to use to um put your little dangleys on right um these are bits of acetate from a dye that came through um you know they, they come through in the little plastic wrapper so i saved the plastic from that and i can now use that to make my um little strips so what i'm going to do is just tidy it up a bit okay on my guillotine and i tell you what this guillotine goes through acetate like it's not even there it's amazing and then i just cut i don't know half a centimeter wide strips just nice little thin strips um my ex's dad did them that way don't miss the ex but i do miss his dad's roast um, right so just lots of little strips like this um not necessarily going to use them all but um, there we go right so that should be enough and that's and all we want to do now is um start popping these onto the card so i'm gonna have my my wonky mermaid with the big edge um don't worry about that i can i'll stick her down and i might pull her off later and replace her um sounds painful don't worry she'll be fine um so i'm just going to use some dotty tape pen on her normally i would use tacky glue but i'm just doing it quickly all right so she's gonna go there all right my other mermaid is going to go here pretty oh she nearly took a seahorse with her all right nearly there nearly finished you'll be able to go and get a cup of of tea and go and watch Liam. All right, and I'll put my wishing you or waving hello up here. Okay, and now all we need to do, I'm going to stick um, a bubble at the top of one of these pieces, and you can cut them down. That's why I'm not too worried about the length on these. Um, so you can cut them down to whatever length you want them to and then maybe a seahorse a bit further down so the seahorse is making the bubbles all right um and then oh i don't know what else should we do we'll do a seahorse i seem to have lost my seahorse oh there we go they were hiding together i think they do that in the wild don't they um there we go, another seahorse there, um, with perhaps a little bit of greenery underneath. Um, let's maybe have a pink shell down here, and a star up there. There we go, and like I said, what you do is you put it in and you see what height you want it and then you just trim off the excess all right and then you can just put a little bit of tape down there 
and pop that in. Okay, oops, let's pop that a little bit further. Okay, and let's get a jellyfish up here. So jellyfish up a bit higher, I think. Looking fab. Thanks, Christine. Um, I think Leanne is working with um, one of these sets of Spectrum Noir pens. I think it might even be the illustrators this week um, that she's playing with. So that would be lovely. Um, let's cut that one down a bit. There we go. So we're starting to um, get our card together. And then it's just a case of filling everything up. Um, anyway, right. Let's put you back on there. Right, so it's just putting a few little bits on. I will finish the card off and post it later. Um, and it would be lovely to see you have a go at either this or something similar or using one of the other, um, other edibles um, and making a nice Z-fold card. You're making me want those dies. Sorry, Christine. Um, yes, you will want them. They're lovely. So, uh, right. I'm going to love you and leave you because it's nearly five to four. Um, I've been here way longer than I intended to. I'm so sorry. Um, I will try and be slightly more organised next week and cut it down a bit. Um, and I'll, I'll let you all go. Get yourselves a nice cup of tea and get ready for Leanne. And I'll go and get my oven on. All right. Hope you all have a lovely week. Stay safe. Love you loads. All right. Cheers. Bye, everybody.